Hey yogis, in this practice we are going to focus all on our hamstrings. If you have any kind of flexibility goals with your hamstrings, things like front splits and center splits uh, or middle splits some people call it, these are all really great poses and a really great sequence overall to help you achieve those goals. So you are definitely going to need a strap. If you don't own a strap, it's no big deal. You can just grab a belt, it works just as well. And have one block also somewhere close by. So we're gonna start right away using our strap doing the reclined leg stretch series. So it's reclined leg stretch one, two, and three and we'll do it on both sides so you can come all the way down onto your back and using the strap even if you are really flexible I do recommend um, doing this with a strap so you want to loop it around the ball of your foot and then extend your leg straight up to the sky so a lot of people really like to hold on close up towards the foot and you're totally welcome to do that this is up to you I simply prefer to have my upper arms relaxed on the mat so I like to hold it further down um, but again, it's totally up to you and try not to hyper extend and lock the knee here So just a tiny tiny little bit of flexion at the knee uh, Just to help protect that joint and if you find that your leg begins to shake or it's really hard for you to hold this pose Try bending your left leg and keeping the foot flat on the mat and maybe letting the leg not go quite as far And that should help that out So we're gonna start this is leg stretch one just trying to keep the ankle, the knee, and the hip all in one long line. So you are using a little bit of arm strength, but try to use as little as possible so that your um, leg can relax. We don't want to create any kind of tension in the neck and the jaw and the shoulders. Your arms are really just holding your leg in place. And rest assured that we're just going to go deeper and deeper into the hamstrings. So don't feel like you have to go all out with this first pose. We're going to ease our way into it. Setting up for leg stretch number two, you can shift the strap holding it into your right hand this time and we're going to let that right leg open up to the side and down. So you're trying to find that middle point between getting your leg low towards the mat and also thinking of bringing your toes closer towards your right ear. So kind of that in between point. And if you find that you are rolling over a lot and falling over, you can use your left hand to also kind of help keep your leg in place by grabbing a hold of the strap and really push down into your left hip.
Engage the muscles in your right leg a little bit to help it come all the way back up to center. And leg stretch three is when you open it up to the opposite side. So I like to bend the left knee and move your hips a little bit over towards the right just so you have more room. It'll make it a lot easier to let that leg come down. And then re-straighten your left leg, shift your strap into your left hand this time, and just guide that right leg down. It might touch the floor, it might not. For a lot of people, it's going to be hovering, which is totally fine. You can always put a block underneath your hip or underneath your leg somewhere. And you can reach your right arm out to the side, so there is a spinal twist here in this pose. And again, you're just playing with how close you can get your foot to the floor but also how close you can get your toes towards your face. So just that middle point there. Begin to bend your right knee and we're going to roll all the way to center. You can let go of the strap here. Before we go and repeat this sequence on the other side, it might feel good just to let your knees fall in towards one another with your feet flat on the ground. And just notice already the difference between your right leg and your left leg. This is a really simple but highly effective sequence you can do if you're trying to increase flexibility in your hamstrings. And we'll go and do the same thing over on the other side. So starting with leg stretch one, you can slide your right leg straight down, and loop the strap around the ball of your left foot this time, 
And again, choose where you want to hold on. I like to go a little bit lower. And you might find that one side is totally different from the other. I know for me, the left leg is um, actually a little shorter than my right one and the hamstrings are always, always tighter. So just make up for that difference, not by uh, pulling harder or trying, you know, exerting more effort, but actually finding your edge. And if that means you don't go quite as far in the pose, that's totally fine. A little bend in that knee and deepen your breath. Let's find our leg stretch to transfer the strap over to your left hand and use that to guide the left leg all the way open to the side. And if you feel like you're toppling over, you can reinforce the hold of the strap and the hold of the leg by using your right hand as well. Try to push into your right hip and right shoulder. Little micro bend in the knee and just soften here.
Let's carefully lift that leg all the way up. Bend your right knee again and just shift your hips a little bit to the left this time, just to make it easier to twist. And you can re-extend your right leg, bring your strap over to your right hand, just to guide that foot, maybe all the way down or maybe on a block. Reach your left arm out to the side. Try to keep your left shoulder down on the mat. So collarbones face up. And you should feel this pretty intensely through the hamstrings, but also the IT band, maybe into the glute a little bit too. Bend into your left knee, release the strap. We won't be needing it anymore, so you can just set it off to the side. We're gonna come to caterpillar pose, which is just a straight-legged forward fold. So you can roll to the side, come all the way up. And I'm gonna use my block for this one. It's completely optional, you don't need to have one. So straightening your legs out in front of you, you can have your feet about hip width distance apart or so. And making this a passive fold, you can start to round and fold over the legs. And depending on where you end up, you can always prop a couple blocks or pillows underneath you. I'm just gonna put my block there, but it's optional. Sometimes just letting the head dangle can be really comfortable. A little bit of a bend in the knees is great as well. We don't want to hyperextend or lock through the joints. Try to relax your neck, let your chin be heavy.
And while this of course works deeply into the hamstrings, you'll probably also be feeling it along the spine into the back of the neck and maybe even the back of the head. Begin to push into your palms. Take your time. Go really slowly here. Being mindful of your spine, of your lower back as you come out of the pose. And we'll have a few more forward folds. So before we go into the next one, maybe just bring your left hand across the right leg. Take a little twist. And release and do the same thing on the other side right hand to the outer left leg and release so coming into our half butterfly pose you can keep your right leg extended out to the side and bring your left foot to the inside of the groin or inside of the inner thigh and we'll start with more of a side bend for this one so the i like to either let the right elbow go down onto the thigh it can come down to the mat or you can always put it on the block too just in front of you this tends to be um, usually what students find the most comfortable and you can just let your head rest over on your fist or on your palm and bring your left hand behind you towards your lower back to help draw your left shoulder down and away from your ear so of course, the lower you get towards the floor, the deeper you'll feel this in the right hamstrings, but you'll probably feel it through the left side of your waist as well.
you had your left hand behind your lower back, bring it in front once more and use that to push into the floor to come up. Mm, big breath in here and we'll go to the other side. So bending the right knee this time, straightening out the left leg, open out to the side. And once more, block is optional. You can either just let your left elbow rest on your thigh, on the floor, or on a block at any height. Relax your neck and your head, and you can bring your right hand towards your low back just to help pull that right shoulder back and get a little side body stretch here. No tension in the jaw, in the neck, or in the shoulders. Just finding your edge. So if you have a hard time breathing or feel like you need to fidget or move or readjust, it's usually a good indication that you've gone a little too far in a pose. Less is always more with yin.
and we'll ease out from the side right hand can go in front of you slowly back out of the pose out of the side bend and we'll come into our full straddle fold so you can extend both legs out this time and instead of going into a side bend like what we were doing in half butterfly we're just going to fold straight out to the center so you can do this with or without a block maybe just letting gravity do the work for you as you fold on down or you can always keep a block underneath you to stay a little bit higher up so i like to do this one without a block because i find the longer i hold it the more i flatten down towards the floor but one version is not better than the other. Whatever would feel best for you now. Super slowly come out of the forward fold, mainly with the use of your arms and arm strength. Just walk your hands in, inch by inch. And we've been here a while, so you might want to use your hands to help the knees bend. And before we lower down onto our backs, it might feel good to just take a little windshield wiper motion with the knees here. Letting the knees drop side to side. I'm not rushing this motion. I'm 
before moving to Shavasana, as you lower down, you can take like a reclined child's pose, just squeezing the knees to the belly. You can stay still or you can rock a little. Taking about 10 breaths here. Whenever you feel ready, make your way to Shavasana. Straightening your legs, reaching out through your arms. And you'll probably notice a big difference through the legs into the hamstrings. Relax your low back, your hips, your shoulders. And find stillness here. And deepen your breath, begin to reawaken 
And you can reach your arms up overhead and stretch out really long. Roll to the side. Come on up to take a seat. Closing your eyes. And drawing the hands together at the front of the heart. And bowing in gratitude. Namaste. Thank you, yogis. I hope you enjoyed this practice, and I look forward to practicing again with you soon.